Clinical crown lengthening. A young patient with healthy periodontium, both from a clinical and radiographic point of view, shows a predominantly horizontal dental fracture such that it causes the loss of the clinical crown of the first left mandibular premolar. The aim of the operation for the lengthening of a clinical crown is to highlight the gingival margins for a future restoration and reviving a new biological amplitude that is in harmony with the definitive prosthesis restoration. After local anaesthetic, an intracircular incision is made with the aim of preserving the quantity of keratinized tissue present, extending into the sulcus of the two neighboring teeth, respectively the canine and first molar, thinning the respective mesial and distal papillae. Carrying out a partial thickness flap until the mucogingival junction is reached and subsequently going beyond it by a few millimetres, thus acquiring extreme mobility which will allow an adequate and desired apical positioning. After probing on the palatal side, a thinned palatal flap will be carried out with anticipation of the bone crest. This flap is designed using a 15C blade orientated perpendicularly to the long axis of the tooth. It starts with a paramargin incision in a more accentuated way in correspondence with the tooth in need of a dental prosthesis. It then re-enters the intracircular site in correspondence with the mesial and distal extremity of the canine and second premolar respectively. A number of incisions are then carried out, positioning the scalpel blade parallel to the long axis of the tooth with the aim of thinning it, a primary palatine flap. After reaching the apical extension desired, a full thickness incision is carried out on the most apical part, only now reaching the periodontal osseous structure. After removing any excess tissue, secondary palatine flap, Granulomatous tissue is then removed either with rotary or manual instruments. At this point, supporting bone is removed to reduce the bone level by about 3 to 4 millimetres, starting from the healthy bone structure. This ostectomy is also carried out on the palatal and vestibular aspect with a rod chisel and by means of a diamond ball burr. This ostectomy produces the desired osseous architecture scalloped, parabolic, physiological. A universal correct may be used to eliminate small interproximal spicules of bone which could subsequently compromise the desired outcome. At the end of this surgical step a periodontal probe is used to check that the desired clinical crown lengthening has been obtained respecting a positive bone architecture. The flaps are then sutured with EPTFE thread with a mixed mattress suture technique, vertical, periosteal, vestibular and horizontally palatally. It can be seen how the periosteal anchoring on the vestibular side gives the surgeon the possibility to position the partial thickness vestibular flap according to the clinical need in the desired position. Given the presence of a sufficient amount of keratinized tissue, the vestibular flap is sutured exactly at the level of the bone crest to cover the underlying bone. On the palatine side, where the interdental spaces and the papillae are usually bigger, horizontal mattress sutures may be used. At the surgeon's discretion, a surgical dressing may be used. After an adequate amount of time for the healing process to be completed, in this specific case after six months, the premolar was completed with a gold ceramic dental prosthesis. Fully satisfying both the surgeon's and the patient's functional and aesthetical needs.